Dominic Meyer is the owner and managing director of Miller Meyer Consulting, a political strategy consultancy he co-founded in 1997. Dominic is chairman of the German Association of Political Consultants, vice president of the public affairs community of Europe, and a member of the advisory board of Transparency International Deutschland. He publishes the pluralistic political magazine Freiheit, Macht and Politik. Um, today he will address us on the topic, the future of Germany's transatlantic relationship in the face of competition with China. This session now, um, we're sort of zooming in and um, getting closer to home, getting closer to where we are and having a view with Dominic from Berlin. Dominic, over to you and I give you um, so. this fine tool and I get you up Thank to you very where much. you are. So press next and then okay. you, you go where you want to be. Dominic, over to you. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. So I'm Dominic. I'm happy to be here. Um, what I'm doing since 25 years, I try to explain what is Germany politics doing worldwide. And it's more complicated than ever to explain what Germany is doing in Europe and Germany is doing worldwide. So I, I make only 10, 15 minutes. I give you some messages, what I think is ongoing now for, for our discussion with Luis later. And uh, it's really neat. This is, that's my point. My message for you today is Germany goes geopolitics, and it's not too easy because Germany has to learn how it functions, geopolitics. And we are really a student in this case. And we are completely a little bit lost now between these famous three um, yeah, political areas, Russia, Ukraine, China, and the famous transatlantic relationship. And what's the biggest problem? Because we spoke about great power, and power needs resources. Germany's energy depends on Russia. So two of the most critical decisions in the last 16 years of Merkel's and Scholz's politics was two things. To depend on energy of Russia, and after a big fight, ideological fight, to decide to stop nuclear energy in Germany. Why Willy Brandt and Helmut Schmidt have decided to use nuclear energy and coal? The question was the independency from outside of Germany to produce energy. Make it really clear. We stopped in April the last two nuclear energy plants. So Germany is completely blackmailing from outside. We are completely dependent from energy from outside. This is the German geopolitical um, yeah, challenge. For the, and we have to be clear. And our competition in the great power game knows this very well, from Putin, from Biden, up to the Chinese political party leadership. So this is an important point in German politics, in European politics at all. We stop nuclear energy on an ideological basis, but we have to import nuclear energy from Europe, from France, from the Czechs. So coming to the point, and this may give, give you some points about how you can interpret German and European politics also in the transatlantic. Inconsistencies. Our German politics is globally completely inconsistent without any strategy. I was in Washington two weeks ago and we present this famous German national security strategy. You know what the answer was American was? Nothing. Ridiculous. Poor, poor, poor trees to, to produce uh, the papers. This was a clear reaction of the Americans. And this coming to a point, and now coming to um, Germany is squeezed between the US and the China. I'm a transatlantic guy. Joachim knows this very, very well. And uh, we're, work, we're working for so many American companies and all funds. How we can describe Germany between US and China? And I give you only some famous points to think on for our debate. One year ago, we was listening a famous speech, speech of Mr. Scholz, our chancellor, the famous Zeitenwende speech. You can read the speech more in a global Zeitenwende speech in the foreign affairs. He make a good, good article about this. But what is the key problem of Germany for the moment in the great power game? Take, take the United States on one hand. Germany is completely dependent on military and security support from the Americans and from the NATO. So 
We can do nothing. We are learned with Ukraine um, is still to think about how we can use our army. And it's unfortunately, um, sometimes what you hear about German military system is all true. So we are depend on one hand from the Americans, especially in the military and security aspect. And the big debate ongoing because uh, also we're still waiting for the famous German, German China strategy. Big debate since years, nothing coming out like this otherwise. Because if the, the big problem between decoupling and de risking is um, if you speak with our, um, especially our automotive sector friends here about China, you know what's going on. So we are strong, depend in economic ways from China. And not only the automotive sector, takes the pharmaceutical sector, takes take the chemical sector, and so on. So, so we are really squeezed. So what we can do in the middle? Good question, and we have no answer. The answer is um, daily politics, completely complicated. Um, and also take the China aspect of tech competition and chips, and the famous question about Taiwan. What is doing with Taiwan? What is American and, and Europe doing because of Taiwan? Nobody knows exactly what's, what's, what's coming up in the next 10, five years. So the Americans expect that, that in the next five years nothing will happen, but it's, not, it's really unclear, especially for the, for, the chip, uh, for, the, for the chip production side and, and how to bring, how can reintegrate um, the production, the chip production from Taiwan back to America. And on the other side, takes the United States, not only is it the security and the, the military depends from us. Yeah, Biden has done, also for you important, this famous inf Inflation Reduction Act. And I can tell you, we have a kind of pilgrim fathership of German big, big companies, especially in the chemical and, and, and the pharmaceutical, to go to America. This is a great deal done, and the answer of the European Union is really much more complicated because uh, Europe, uh, with 27 states to find an answer, is really, really not too easy. And last but not least, uh, the question of the transatlantic partnership is under, still under a kind of anti-Americanism in Germany and Europe. Take Trump, take the tr Trumpian populism and so on. And it's so complicated still for us to bring transatlantic cooperation in a positive term in Germany, also with German politicians. The community of Germans um, uh, who believe in transatlantic is really small. In the core team in German politics, we are not more than 100 people who believe in transatlantic and are decision makers. And important point, because it's also for you from the investment side, because we're working so much together with think tanks. Germany has no think tank culture. We have two or three famous think tanks paid completely by the state in the foreign politics area, two one. But this famous think tank culture we know from America, so we like rolling door systems, you are four years in government, uh, in top position, then the new government coming, you are back in the think tank, you can think about what you can do, so you can relax a little bit and find new ways for, creative way for next poll Politic terms if you come back. So this is also an important point um, um, I would like to mention. It's so complicated for Germans to find his geo geopolitical way. And the last chart, and then coming to the end, and then coming to what you can expect from us in Germany. More regulations than ever. And the biggest problem is not only Germany, I will come up to Europe. So many people, also my, my clients, complain every time. But make really clear, 90% of all the important decisions about energy and economic are done in Brussels, not in Germany. And this makes also a kind of complicated um, um, balancing between to be a global player if Germany depends 90% on regulation sometimes from Brussels. But if the state is coming back, we have three important issues. And also for Achim and, and, and for his brilliant idea, thank you, Achim, to be here and for this first important step to debate with you about the future, especially of sustainability and green transition. Yeah. We have three important trends for Germany, and the German future depends on, the, on these three trends. Climate change and green transition. 
This German government believes completely in this, 100%. And they make no doubt that this is the key element of the whole German politics in the next two years also. And of course, the Chinese Germans, and I think they understand, and we have big, big and complicated deb debates in the German go government, in the, diff in the parties, but for me, it's, and for you, I think it's absolutely clear. We speak about de-risking and not about decoupling. Not now, not in five years, not in ten years. Also depends on the Taiwan situation. And the last and important point also worldwide, also for you, is the changing of the labor market and the, and, the, uh, and the rise of artificial intelligence. Nobody knows what is coming up, also for you, but this will be changed a lot of, uh, of our working issues, also the question of the change in the labor, labor market. But the demographic aspect of Europe and um, the demographic aspect um, of the labor market situation changes also this completely um, political style, how to manage sometimes politics. I just was, because I have to see the time, and we would like to come to the dis debate, um, Joachim. This, this is the most impo important point. And because I would like also to, to come to this famous question from you um, about the relationship between economic companies on one hand and politics, politicians, governments on the other hand. And I can tell you, politics is back. Since the pandemic and since the Ukraine war, it's a clear privacy. And unfortunately, this means not only privacy, this means regulation. And this German government and this European Union have dreams of regulation. They don't believe that human beings sometimes can, think, can do perhaps things better alone. Take the famous energy laws in Europe and Germany in the last, in the last two, three years. Uh, and this, I think, is a new development also for you, and also especially for risk assessment, for all your activities. You know, we can, be, we can debate about ESG. What does this mean for companies? What does this mean for, for new bureaucratic systems? Especially taxonomy um, questions mm. up to the beginning of next year. So that is a clear message. The state is back, regulation is back, more reg regulation forever. Germ is a student in geopolitical um, um, learnings. And I'm optimistic for my country, that's that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominic.